The South Carolina State Supreme Court recently confirmed what abolitionists have always contended, namely that pro-life incrementalism is incredibly stupid. Hey everybody, James Silberman here coming to you with some extremely important lessons out of the South Carolina State Supreme Court about how compromise and arbitrariness undercut the anti-abortion legal argument. In 2021, South Carolina passed the Harpy Bill into state law. On January 5, 2023, the state Supreme Court struck down the bill in a 3-2 decision. Justice John Few is one of the three justices in the majority, and he had some very instructive comments in his concurrence. Let's dig into it. Justice Few writes, We may not find the Fetal Heartbeat Act violates Article 1, Section 10 unless we find its restrictions on a pregnant woman's opportunity to have an abortion are, as a matter of law, an unreasonable invasion of her privacy. This brings me to the 2021 Fetal Heartbeat Act, or six-week bill. In enacting the legislation, the 124th General Assembly considered the evidence it deemed important and balanced the state's interest against any countervailing interest that may exist. Here, Few is setting up his reasoning, saying that while an abortion ban infringes on the freedom of the mother, some infringements of freedom are, of course, legally reasonable. While mothers generally have an interest in freedom and privacy, the state has a countervailing or offsetting interest in protecting human life. In judging the constitutionality of a law, a judge sometimes has to weigh contrary rights and interests against each other. Few continues. First, it is important to stress what is not a state interest that justifies the six-week bill. For years, a minority of the General Assembly attempted to enact legislation banning abortion altogether. Those quote-unquote personhood bills, based on what would have become a legislative finding that human life begins at conception, consistently failed to gain majority support. This year, the House of Representatives passed a near-total abortion ban. Like its predecessors, H5399, had it passed the Senate, would have been based on the finding, quote, It is undisputed that the life of every human being begins at conception. Had H5399 become law, the state may have had a good argument that there is no countervailing interest that could render unreasonable the state's use of a total ban on abortion to protect human life from the point of conception. In other words, if the state were to pass a total ban on abortion, despite a complete invasion of the pregnant woman's right to privacy, the privacy invasion might be reasonable under Article 1, Section 10, because human life has no countervailing interest. Human life must simply be preserved. Here, few hits the nail right on the head. The first and most important object of good government is the protection of human life. No other right or interest could ever outweigh the right to life or the government's interest in protecting human life. Had the South Carolina government passed a law abolishing abortion and grounded their legislation in the finding that it is indisputable that life begins at conception, they would have had a strong legal argument, according to Justice Few. However, they did not abolish abortion and thus could not reasonably ground their arguments in an unalienable right to life. Justice Few continues, The state interests advanced by the six-week bill, however, unlike the state interests that might have justified a total ban, are not absolute. Rather, they necessarily contemplate countervailing interests, such as a woman's right to privacy. Did you catch that? Again, Few is saying that the state interest that justifies a total ban on abortion is an absolute interest, and a woman's right to privacy could never outweigh it. But because the Harpy Bill is not grounded in a legislative determination that human life begins at conception, the state's actions are not objectively justified and may be outweighed by countervailing interests. Because the Harpy Bill is not rooted in objective truth, it relies on a subjective balancing of competing interests. So here's the moral of the story of the South Carolina Harpy Bill. Without a, quote, legislative policy determination that human life begins at conception, there is no absolute state interest that justifies enacting abortion bans. When we fail to ground our legislation in objective truth, we give up the right to appeal to objective truth in our argumentation. And when we give up the right to appeal to objective truth in our argumentation, our bills are thrown into a sea of subjective and arbitrary judicial judgments that have almost always resulted in pro-abortion outcomes. While truth is on the anti-abortion side, by compromising with abortion, we forfeit that truth. Life begins at conception, and the role of government before God in our founding documents is to protect inalienable rights like the right to life. It's time to do away with compromised heartbeat bills and 15-week bans. It's time to stand on objective truth and abolish abortion. Now, the South Carolina Senate, which appears to be addicted to compromise and allergic to justice, just passed another harpy bill last week that will inevitably go before the South Carolina Supreme Court once again. While they refuse to learn important lessons from the striking down of the harpy bill, well-meaning pro-life Christians need not be so thick-headed. Examine the bills that your pro-life legislators are passing and your pro-life organizations are supporting. 
Think about the consequences of compromising truth in our bills. Consider what our Lord would think about legislation that allows for the murder of preborn children without a detectable heartbeat, that allows for the murder of preborn children based on the circumstances of their conception. Instead of continuing to support the pro-life establishment, which is lost, completely lost in the sea of pragmatism and compromise, join the quickly growing abolitionist movement that is rooted in truth and sponsors bills that are just. Thank you all for watching this video. If you would like to learn more about the abolitionist movement, click here to learn about the five tenets of abolitionism and click here to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss more important videos like this one. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.